Hey guys! Today I'm going to be filming a kind of casual Photonia care video. I say casual because normally for these I do a bunch of research and see what most sources online claim and then also tie that in with my own experience with certain with certain varieties of plants. Today I didn't do any background research on this plant and the reason for that is when I bought my first Fetonia, I did so much research on it. I knew that they were finicky plants. I wanted to keep it alive. I did my best. I did the most for that Fetonia, everything I could, and it still ended up dying. I just don't think that in all situations, the information you read online is necessarily correct. Um, maybe it's kind of situational by where you live. I've had this Fetonia for six months now and it's doing really really well so yeah yeah that's that so number one the most important thing for a Fetonia plant as far as keeping it alive goes I think is where you place it in your home and there are a few things to keep in mind when you're finding the perfect spot for your Fetonia here's some things that I took into consideration when I placed my plant here so these do prefer low to medium indirect light. And what I mean by that is they don't like any direct sunlight hitting their foliage. Their foliage is extremely delicate and will burn very, very quickly if they get too much light. This plant here, I have it pulled two feet off to the side from a southern exposed window. You can see the window right here. It's making the light all weird. Yeah, that's where I keep it. Two feet off to the side of a southern exposed window. So it does get ambient lighting from that south window throughout the day, most hours of the day actually. And then on this side of the room, I have almost floor to ceiling large western facing windows. Those are honestly probably 20 feet away from this plant, but it does still get some exposure from there. And then in this direction, there is a northern window that is probably 30 to 40 feet away from the plant. So it gets a little bit of ambient lighting from there, but honestly probably doesn't have too much of an effect on it. Something else you wanna keep in mind, too low of light isn't good for the plant either. So they do need some form, they do need a form of lighting. They can't just live in the dark. There is no direct light hitting this plant at any hours of the day. Something else I've taken into consideration is drafts. If you wanna put it somewhere and there's say a heat vent or um, an air conditioning vent or some sort of fan constantly blowing on it, I would maybe not put it in that spot because that heat or cold air constantly blowing on it can really damage the leaves and change the temperature of the plant, which I keep my house between 65 to 72 degrees and this plant seems to really do well with that. A lot of sources online say to keep these in a very low light position, which they they do well in low light. This is definitely a low light section of my house. It does really, really well, but it is still getting that adequate lighting. So it's able to grow and flourish, flourish, flourish the way it should. So this is actually how I killed my Fetonia plant the first time, I think. And it was from over watering it. Everywhere online says to keep the soil moist on this plant. And I do agree to an extent. I used to wait for this plant to wilt between waterings and that worked just fine. So you can definitely, definitely wait for your plant to wilt and then water it and it'll pop back up. But that does use a lot of the plant's energy. So once, maybe do that in the beginning, but then once you're getting a gauge on how frequently you're having to water between those wiltings, I mean, it happens quick. This sucker will be standing up sometimes and then I, walk through here and everything is just laying flat and I think it's completely dead. Um, even though I swear I saw it an hour ago and it would look just like this, but if you can make a mental note of how frequently you're having to water it or how frequently it's drooping, then you can start watering it before it gets to that point where it plops down. What's the plant equivalent of fainting wilting? I don't know, before, before it faints, you can water it before that happens. Initially, that's a really good way to get an idea of how frequently you're going to have to water. I wouldn't plan to do that the entire time you have the plant in your possession. It can be detrimental in the long run if that's happening too frequently. If it's having to use its energy to wilt and to faint and then wake up frequently. So the best method I have found for keeping this plant happy uh, a lot of people might not agree with me on this, but is to bottom water. You guys know I love bottom watering, okay? But this is a plant that it seriously makes such a huge difference for the plant. I just keep this puppy, it has drainage holes in the bottom. I keep this sitting in this little glass crystal dish. 
which I got from the thrift store for like 25 cents or something. If a few days pass by and I notice it's been empty, then I'll go ahead and fill up this container with water. Lately, it's the winter now, so I've only been filling it up probably once a week, and that has been do working really well for the plant. In the summer, it was every three, three days, four days that I was having to fill it up. The plant will just soak up whatever, it water, whatever water it needs. If it needs a little more, it'll soak up a little more. If it needs a little less, whatever's left over will just remain in the bowl. I do know some people have issues with like mold and stuff. I've never ever had that problem. If you're having issues with mold when you're leaving your plant in a dish like this and filling it up every so often, then I would say let your plant sit in the water maybe for a day or so and then dump out the excess water. When you're top watering this plant, I don't know what it is, but it is so easy to overwater. And I do think that when a lot of places online say things like they love the soil to stay moist, that we kind of take that excessively and keep the soil completely saturated with water, water all the time. At least I think that's what happened with me, but this has really, really solved that problem. So. I mean, my plant is alive. This is how it's been living for as long as I've had it. Kind of along the same note of watering, fertilizing the plant, feeding the plant. I personally use a fish fertilizer. It's like the Alaskan fish something something. I'll link it in the description if you wanna try it out for yourself. What I like about this fertilizer for more especially delicate plants, I actually use this fertilizer on all of my plants and I have never had an issue with it. It is an organic fertilizer. It's not going to burn your plants, which is why it's so great for a delicate plant like a Fetonia. If you're using a non-organic like chemically fertilizer, it can burn the foliage of certain plant varieties, especially the more delicate ones, such as Fetonia, our little delicate girl. We don't want that because she has the prettiest little markings. We don't wanna burn that. Just use a fish fertilizer. I dilute it to about quarter strength. I'll mix that into the water before I fill up the bottom dish and let her soak it up. I only do this like once a month in the winter, but in the summer I do it every time I water. I highly recommend that fertilizer. Humidity. This is a moisture loving plant. They do prefer high humidity. Humidity really isn't that important to the plant. What's more important is that the roots aren't excessively drying out between waterings. This is what I've found anyway. Again, this is all my experience. Humidity isn't completely necessary, but the plant will grow faster and the foliage will come in a lot more healthy looking if it is provided adequate humidity. So right now I'm using a Lavoite humidifier. I keep the humidity at about 50%. 45, 50%, depending on what the temperature is outside. And my plant has been pushing out new growth a lot more quickly. It looks a lot healthier and the patterns are a lot more pronounced on the leaves. So humidity is really beneficial to the plant, but it's not necessary to the plant. This did just fine before I had a humidifier in my house and I live in a desert. It's not necessary, I keep saying that, but it's really not. This plant has really done a lot better with a humidifier in the room. And then the last thing I think I'm going to talk about is propagating this plant. You can separate the individual little uh, crowns of the plant, pluck one out, roots and all, pot it up somewhere else, or you can also take cuttings, which is what I prefer to do. Taking cuttings from this plant is actually really beneficial if you prefer a more full looking, like bushier plant. So wherever you take a cutting from, it's going to split and grow more full. Taking cuttings from the plant is actually really great for the overall health of the plant, especially if it starts to get a little bit leggy, which this plant definitely can. There's some pieces over here I need to rotate this more frequently. It definitely is leaning a little bit, but you can see over here, this back side of the plant, this is gonna be the front side now, is definitely leaning a little bit toward the light, which plants do that. Um, I usually try to rotate every so often, but on this one, I forget. What legginess is, is when there's excessive space between the leaves and it starts to look sparse and like gangly kind of, uh, really thin. So if you, I'm probably going to take a cutting here, the plant is going to start pushing out new growth more close together, and then it can also split and form two stems. Both stems will form leaves, which is double the leaves and makes the plant look more full. All I'm going to do is take a cutting right above a set of leaves. So here's my cutting, and then I'm going to pull off the bottom couple leaves you can root these in soil. Just make sure you keep the soil very damp while you're propagating Fetonia. As you guys know, I love me some water propagation and these guys do root 
super, super quickly in water. So I'm just going to pop them in there. Once you have your the root growth of your dreams, for a plant this size, I probably wouldn't pot it up until they had about two inch long roots so that I know that the root system is able to absorb enough water and nutrients and stuff out of the soil once I pot it to support the plant itself, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to keep this right here next to the mother plant. Propagation is a great way to make your plant more full like up here, but then you can also pot these cuttings back into the soil to help fill in around the edges a little bit. Yeah, I'll use that to fill in some of the emptiness along the edges there. I think that's everything I can say about the Fetonia. Everything I feel is important from my, my experience. If you have any more questions or you're having issues with your Fetonia, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to respond to everybody. It's not always possible, but I will do my best. Let me know any additional Fetonia care tips that I forgot to mention in this video or that has worked for you. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!